Hello and welcome to this video for module eight of the Netbox Zero to Hero training course. If you haven't already checked out the earlier modules yet, then you can find the link to them in the notes below to get you started. For this demo, I'm using a Docker instance of Netbox running locally on my laptop. If you'd like to follow along with the demo, then you can easily do that. There are a couple of links down below to help you spin up your own instance of Netbox, along with a link to the course that accompanies this video. The IT manager has now decided that there are going to be two data scientists working out of the new Brisbane office. And so it makes sense to have a database server located on premise there, along with a local file and print server. These servers will be virtual machines hosted on a VMware vSphere cluster. In this video, network engineer Susan will add the required physical servers for the vSphere cluster, create the cluster, and then add the virtual machines for the servers. She'll also define the services, including the protocol and port numbers that will be running on the VM servers. And all of this will be done via the web interface. So the first thing to do is to add the physical servers that will make up the VMware vSphere cluster. As you'll know, if you've been following along, before you can add a device, you need to set up the manufacturer and the device type. So under devices, click add next to manufacturers and then enter HPE and click create. Then create the device role for the servers. Click the plus next to device roles and then add vSphere and go with orange for the color and click create. Then add the device type. So from the device type library GitHub repo, copy the YAML definition of the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 9 server. And then in the UI, click on the blue import icon next to device types, and then paste in the YAML and click submit. Next, create two devices from this device type by clicking on the blue import icon next to devices, and then paste in the CSV data to define the two servers. AUBRI01 VSP1 and 2. Note that the CSV data also includes the rack mounting information, with the first server located at rack unit 1 and the second at unit 3. So after clicking on submit, check the rack elevation now by clicking on the link to the rack, and there are the two new servers at the bottom of the rack. Next, add the cables to connect the servers to the access switch. And again, do this using the CSV data from the file accompanying this module. Click on connections and then the blue import icon and paste in the CSV data for the six cables. These are connecting the ILO ports and two of the gigabit ethernet ports. And they are two meters long cat six cables in blue for the ILO and in green for the main ethernet connections and then click submit. Great, so the two ethernet interfaces on each server are going to be members of a lag interface or aggregated ethernet interface in Juniper networking terms. In order to create these lag interfaces, click devices, select the switch and then click interfaces. Then scroll down and click on add interfaces in the bottom right corner. So the name of the first lag interface is AE0 and it is of type lag. The 802.1Q mode is tagged all and the VLAN groups is Brisbane VLANs. And then do exactly the same thing, adding the second interface, AE1. Next, select both interfaces, GE001 and 2, and then click Edit. Then add them both to the AE0 lag interface by scrolling down to Related Interfaces, and for lag, select AE0, and then under 802.1Q switching, select Tagged All and the Brisbane VLANs, and then click on apply. And then do the same for the interfaces GE003 and 4, but this time select AE1 for the lag. Then for the two ports connected to the ILO ports, select both GE0044 and 45, then for switching mode select access and then the Brisbane VLAN group and select the network management VLAN 50 and click apply. The last thing to do for the physical servers is assign IP addresses to the ILO interfaces. To do this, go to IPAM prefixes and then select the network management prefix and click on the IP addresses tab. Then click add IP address. Note that the next available IP address is already pre-populated. Set the status as reserved and then add the DNS name of the first server. Then under interface assignment, click device, select the server and the ILO interface and tick the box to make this the primary IP, as this is the out-of-band management port. Then click Create and add another. 
edit the DNS name to be server two and assign this one to the second server's ILO port. Click make primary and then click save. Okay, so that's the physical server and connections all added. It's time to set up the virtual cluster and the VMs themselves. Before this though, we need to add the platforms for the VM servers. So under devices, click platforms and then add. Now the database server is running on Ubuntu Linux version 22.10. So add that as the name and click on create and add another. And the file and print server is running on Windows Server 2022. So add this and then click create. Great, so that's the platforms all set up. Obviously these can be used for any other servers that are added to the network going forward. Click on virtualization and click the plus next to cluster types. Give it a name of VMware vSphere and click create. Then click add a cluster and give it the name AUBRI01 vSphere1. Status is planned. Select the Brisbane site and the consulting tenant and then click create. Then assign the two physical servers to the cluster by clicking assign device and select the region as Brisbane, the site group as branch, select the rack and then select both the physical vSphere servers and then click create. Okay, now to add the VMs, just click on add virtual machine and the first one to add is the database server, SQL01. Status is planned, the cluster is already populated, so select the platform as Ubuntu 22.10 and then assign the resources. So this one has 32 vCPUs, 128 gig of RAM and 200 gig of disk. Then click create and add another. And this is the Windows file and print server. So the platform is Windows Server 2022 and this has eight vCPUs, 64 gig of RAM and 128 gig of disk. Okay, so now we have the VMs, we need to create their VM interfaces. Click on the database server and click add interfaces. Give it a name of ETH0 and for switching, make it tagged for VLAN 10 and then do the same for the Windows server. Click the server name and then click add interfaces, then call this one Ethernet. And then again for switching, make it tagged for VLAN 10 and click create. So now there are the VM interfaces, we can assign them IP addresses from the data VLAN. So go to IPAM and prefixes, click the data VLAN and then the IP addresses tab and then click add IP address. So this is reserved, add to the DNS name of the database server and then for interface assignment, click virtual machine, select the VM and interface and make it primary. Then click create and add another. This time the DNS name is the Windows Server, then select VM and interface Ethernet and again make it primary then click create. Great, so that's the VMs created with interfaces and IP addresses. So now let's make use of another great feature with the netbox called service mapping and this is where you can define the actual services for applications that run on servers. So within IPAM click the plus sign next to service templates and call this one PostgreSQL and define the protocol as TCP and the port number as 5432. Then click create and add another. And this one will be SSH, again TCP with port 22. And then add another, this time for the Windows server. It will be TCP ports 139 and 445. And then click create. So now go back to virtualization, virtual machines and select the database server. Then assign the services to it from the templates you just created. Click on assign service and then select the Postgres service template. Select the IP address, which in this case is the only IP defined for the VM interface and create and add another. Select the database server again under virtual machine and this time add the SSH service from the template and the IP address. Then lastly, click create and add another. And for the VM, select the Windows server. Then Windows file and print service from the template the IP of the VM interface and click create. And that's all three of the services created and assigned to the VMs. Okay, so now you can check the finished VMs, for example, the Windows VM, and you can see the services now defined also. One last thing that will be really useful here is for Susan to add the contacts for these servers so that other team members know who to contact whenever there is any planned work like upgrades, etc., for the servers. So she can click add contact, Select the IT group and then add Eric as the primary contact for the operations role for this server. And just for completeness, do the same for the SQL server to add Eric again as the contact. 
Now, if you are following along with the course and have Netbox set up as your dynamic inventory for Ansible, then if you check the inventory again now with the command ansible inventory list i netbox underscore inv yaml and then scroll back up through the output, you can see that the new hosts have now been automatically added to the inventory. For example, here is the SQL server with all its host variables. So if you are using Ansible to automate your servers as well as your network devices, then this is awesome as they will be in your inventory just like any other device you've defined. So I hope that's been a useful overview of how Netbox models virtualization, including cluster types, clusters, platforms, VMs, VM interfaces, and application services. If you have any questions as you go through the course, then pop on over to the Netbox Zero to Hero channel on the NetDev community Slack. If you aren't already a member, then you can sign up for free using the link below. So once again, thanks very much for watching.